What is going on guys? Welcome to this review of the 2018 MacBook Pro 13 inch. We'll be going over my first impressions, how I've been using it, the performance, the little quirks, the good, the bad, and the bottom line. So as many of you know, Apple recently refreshed the 13 inch as well as the 15 inch MacBook Pros with touch bar and I have picked up the 13 inch to be my new daily driver. This particular model is the $1,800 one entry level with 256 SSD, i5, eighth generation Intel chip. And yeah, let's get right into taking a look at everything uh, I have to say about it as well as the quirks and the changes. So first and foremost is keyboard. Let's talk keyboard. Let's get this right out of the way. So I am coming from a 2014 MacBook Pro. So with that being said, this is a tremendous adjustment. Um, I will say with that in mind, the keys are better than last year's model. So I had a opportunity to use the 2017 MacBook Pros and the reason I actually did not update last year was the keyboard. So uh, as most of you know, my day job is writing code and a lot of code, particularly iOS apps. And with that being said, I type all day. So if the keyboard doesn't work for me, the laptop's no good for me. So this keyboard is a lot more tactile feeling. Uh, it is quieter, so A lot quieter. With that being said, hopefully this will be durable and time will tell if dust and lint gets underneath these keys. There is a new silicon cap under the keys that Apple has put, most likely to prevent that very issue from occurring. They will never in a million years admit it publicly, but most likely that's what that silicon cap is for. Let's also get the port situation out of the way. So the port on this guy uh, is pretty minimal, the ports. So if you take a look, we actually have Thunderbolt and USB-C, Thunderbolt and USB-C, and that is about it. This whole side is pretty much empty and the other side is pretty much the same. So yeah, so with that being said, I do have my trusty dongle. So the only uh, port that I really ever need personally is a USB. So I picked up this USB-A to USB-C um, adapter at the Apple Store. It was 20 bucks, if I'm being completely honest. Um, I will be headed to um, AliExpress, the website that ships things from China, and picking up from that one from there because they're like 50 cents. Um, but yeah, so... The dongle situation, I don't mind this one dongle considering I only use one port. If you are someone who uses a lot of ports, Apple sells, as well as other third-party manufacturers, sell cases that clip onto the bottom of your MacBook and provide one input into the device itself and an array of ports that go down either side based on where you plug it in, right? So that will have a USB or multiple USBs, SD card, um, some video audio out, and basically everything you had in the older Retina MacBook Pros 2015, 2014. So if you wanna pick up one of those, those run around 60 to 70 bucks from like Best Buy, or I'm pretty sure the one that Apple sells is like more than 150. So it's really your guys' call, but at the end of the day, ports are ports. Um, and as long as you get all of them for the least amount of money and they work, you should be pretty well off. In terms of performance, this guy is snappy. So if we actually just open up, let's open up, let's say like, let's open up Google Chrome, right? This guy is snappy. Um, needless to say, it's the newest MacBook Pro that Apple has put onto the market. It will be snappy. I will personally actually be returning this one and exchanging it for a higher i7 16 gig model. 
I tried to get away with the eight gig um, with some of the heavier work that I do, photo editing, graphical stuff, video editing, uh, iOS development, some other software development, compiling, things can get pretty, pretty slow. On top of things getting slow sometimes, these MacBook Pros, especially considering that this is the entry-level quad-core i5 and not an i7, not an i9, they do run hot. The fan will turn on. The fan kicks on pretty, pretty fast and pretty often, I would say. Compared to my older 2014 MacBook Pro, I was kind of surprised. Um, the first day that I picked this guy up, the fan was on in like 10 minutes of me trying to compile something in Xcode and trying to export something in Final Cut Pro. So at first I was a little disappointed, but I realized performance is there. When you do things that are heavy, the quad core chips produce a tremendous amount of heat and the fans will kick on. Considering how thin this computer is, the ventilation situation isn't the best. So still got the vents here in the hinge itself. Probably very tough to see. Um, these are actually fake speaker grills still coming out of the bottom, the actual audio. I don't know why Apple couldn't have put a fan redesign in here and actually had some of the heat coming out of the side, maybe not up here where you're typing and where your hands would be, but they didn't. So that's a situation with the heat and the computer getting hot. The keyboard we talked about, let's get on with the trackpad. So the trackpad is exactly the same as 2017. Beautiful, beautiful trackpad. I would say this is one of the best trackpads found on a computer, um, a laptop for that matter. So um, nice and big, great palm rejection, um, great force touch capability in it. The camera, pretty standard camera up here. Great quality, no issues, no complaints there. Um, closing the lid here, you will see no more glowing Apple logo as they did away with a couple of years back. This guy gets, with heavy usage, six to seven hours of battery life for me personally. Take that with a grain of salt, as I'm sure everyone's usage is different. Um, also, I do keep my laptop plugged in quite a bit as I'm sitting right next to my outlet where I work. So that's the situation with that. Other than that, it's a beautifully designed machine. Very, very thin. Here's the port situation on this side, actually. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I mean, that's, that's all there is to this review. I mean, I've been using a MacBook for a very long time. This is a long overdue uh, update. Um, let's see, what else did I miss? So this touch bar, I don't even want to say much about this touch bar because I still think it's a little gimmicky. I will say, um, since upgrading, I have gotten a little accustomed to it and it's kind of nice for certain applications that do support it very well, most of them being uh, Apple's own application. So let's say you're writing some software in Xcode, which most people don't do. Well, most normal people I would say won't do. So if you're doing that, you get a lot of hot keys and shortcut keys here. So that's really nice. Um, you also actually do have Touch ID here. I did forget to discuss that. So the Touch ID, very, very fast. We're all familiar with it from the iPhone. I have no doubt this will be going away uh, in a few years, if not next year, the year after in favor of Face ID. Right next to that, we have the dedicated Siri button. Um, I won't say the hey, you know who word. So all of your guys' Siri doesn't turn on, but the T2 chip is in this machine. So I can say, hey, dot, 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 and she'll wake up and I can ask her for the weather or whatever have you now. So that's the deal with this bar up here. Um, I wish there was an option to like fully turn off the bar. Or like maybe if Apple upgraded the one without the bar, I would probably have opted for that. I mean, I'm sure this is a decent amount of a power draw from the actual battery, uh, despite the fact that the T2 chip is running and managing it all. But um, they didn't update that model, and I'm pretty sure that one's going to be falling off their offering very, very soon off their website, considering they didn't even update it. Um, in terms of software, running the latest version of High Sierra, there are some issues with High Sierra, very nitty gritty issues that aren't really something that uh, the majority of people would even notice or would even be impacted by things that some pro users would probably notice. But I mean, the Apple file system is pretty fast. Everything is pretty snappy. Let's see how this holds up. And when I do get the higher spec 13 inch, 
I definitely will be doing an unboxing and a review of that. And if I still have this guy laying around prior to when I got to ship this back, I will do a comparison for performance because the only reason I'm getting that more upgraded one is to put a heavier load on it as I usually have Final Cut, Android Studio, Xcode, Chrome, and Photoshop all going at the same time. So I need a couple more gigs of RAM, if you know what I'm saying. But that's about it, guys. That's my review for this 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro. If you're new, definitely subscribe. I have a bunch of videos coming and a bunch of Apple-related news, a lot of technology news in general, um, unboxings, impressions, etc. Throw a like if you like what you saw. Throw some comments down below. Do you plan on getting the new MacBook? Do you like it? Um, Apple also recently just crossed the trillion-dollar mark uh, in terms of market capitalization, so the first trillion-dollar publicly traded company. So... Throw your thoughts down below. I really love getting messages from you guys and interacting with you guys. So yeah, I will catch you guys in the next video.